All right, so now that we've done a little bit of practical, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the class that we run. This is a picture of uh, myself and our wonderful participants that we have in the class right now at NeuroAbility. Um, you can see they're holding the boom whackers, which are a nice tool that we use to help give targets for our patients and help create bigger movements and more, more specific and directed movements for them. Um, our class runs run once a week and each class is designed with a functional focus. So again, this is just the way that we chose to design our class. We do a warm up, we do a power flow, a, a creation of uh, the exercises, the power exercises put together in a sequence that we design. We then do a high intensity cardio piece and an interval training piece where we mix power ideas with other movements. So. For example, our first class that we did, one of the classes, sorry, that we did was focused on movements relevant to getting in and out of a car. Another functional focus that we used one day was bed mobility, ideas like that, just so we plan our classes around a functional piece. You can see here they're doing some nice side stretching. I'm going to show you a few other pictures. This is them doing some sit-stand movements, and one of my favorite part about these pictures is how little you can see because these patients are moving so fast and doing such big movements, which is a great sign when you're doing a class for people living with Parkinson's. Here's another picture. You can see those big arm and leg movements. And one last one. Here they're actually doing touch jumps, so touching the floor and jumping up to the sky or various adapted versions that we've offered. So that's a little bit about our class and how we run it. Um, now we're going to talk a little bit about the resources in our community. So first we're going to start with the physical activity guidelines, the Canadian physical activity guidelines for those living with Parkinson's. So these are pretty supportive of what the research says. They say that people with Parkinson's who exercise fare better over time than those who don't. They say that we should start physical activity early on and that it should be done for life. And they talk about a few different kinds of activity that we should be doing with these patients. So not just aerobic activity, but other activities that, again, focus on these cardinal symptoms, getting them strong, getting them flexible, working on their postural alignment and balance, um, and also being aware of things like well-being and mood and motivation. This is a list that was created by Catherine Eyre, one of the clinicians working in our clinic when we designed the program. She did this as research to before we created our program at the clinic, and what this is is a list of the classes that we currently know about that are running in our community that are focused on people living with Parkinson's and exercise. So this just highlights a few of the areas you can go to. Sorry about that. We'll go back. Oh. My apologies. Give me one second to get back there. There we go. So this just highlights some of the groups in our community that are focused on activity for people living with Parkinson's. Getting these patients into a group is a great way to keep them accountable and we know that all of us, no matter our age or our diagnosis, often need motivation to exercise. So keeping these patients accountable and in a class is a really great way to make sure that they get that exercise in and stay motivated. This is the Parkinson's Wellness Recovery website. So that's Becky Farley's website. It gives some great information on the power paradigm and what they do, and also just some good information on exercise and Parkinson's disease. They also have a book online, and I forgot to mention that as part of our class, we require that patients get their book, and the reason is that we give our patients homework every day, so we know that these patients should be active every day. Um, and coming to the class once a week is not necessarily enough. So what we do as part of our class is give them homework. We give them a piece of the class, a piece of the flow that we've done. And we also give them specific pages from the book. So they're accountable to a few pages that they write down that they've done and they bring it in. We also request that they do pole walking every day while they're throughout the duration of our class, but also afterwards, ideally. This is the information for the Parkinson's Society of BC and also for the Parkinson's Society of Canada. The Parkinson's Society of BC is a great um, reference for people. They run support groups, they run programs, they've got lots of great information on updated classes and things happening in the community. And the Parkinson's Society of Canada is also a great reference or resource to use for things like information on 
caregivers and how they can cope with living with people with Parkinson's and they've got a huge range of information if you want to find more on there. So what are the conclusions from this presentation? What do I want you to take away and what do I hope that you've learned? First is that these patients need to get moving. We need to get these patients moving and we need to keep them moving for life. Um, the research has shown us very clearly that exercise is going to improve the symptoms in the lives of these patients. Um, so if there's one thing that you think about when they come into your clinic, again, your place of work, wherever it may be, I hope that you think about getting them moving, getting them exercising, and giving them the tools that they need to make that a lifelong habit. The other really important piece that I want you to take away from this talk is that it's really important to teach our clients the why. So we know that motivation is really difficult for anyone. Getting anyone to exercise is often very difficult, and we know that as physios. So teaching these patients in patient-friendly terms what neuroplasticity is and what it can actually create for them is a really key motivational piece to get them exercising and keep them exercising. So please, when you talk to your patients, explain a little bit about the basic version of the research and what it shows they can actually do to create change in their brain and why exercise is such an important piece of that. The third thing that I hope you really take away from this is that your patients need to be connected in the community. Parkinson's is a progressive disease, it's lifelong, and they need to have places that they can go to either get back on the wagon if they've stopped exercising or get information on different classes or exercises if their symptoms are changing or getting worse. Um, we really need to make sure that they're intertwined in our community and well connected so that they have the resources they need when they need them. The last thing that I really want you to take from this presentation is that Parkinson's patients need your help. As physios, we're often considered the experts on exercise, and these people are coming to you expecting that you're going to know what, to, what they should be doing, um, when and for how long. So they need your help to explain what type of exercise they should be doing, how often they should be doing it, why they should be doing it. We know that these patients will self-select smaller movements, their perception is impacted and they think that they're moving bigger than they are. So they need you, especially at the beginning, to give them really clear, strong feedback on what big, active, dynamic movements mean and what those look like compared to what they're doing now. Um, these patients, again, need a resource that they can come back to if their symptoms are changing, if they're having trouble exercising, if they're having trouble staying active, and you're the person who they can come to and have as a solid resource when things may be changing in their lives. So make sure that with these patients you book a follow-up, you hold them accountable, and just recognize that they really do need your help. So I hope that you've taken away from today some tools that you can use when the patients come into your place of work and that you'll have some confidence in teaching them why they need to exercise, why it's so important, and that you can get them moving starting from when they see you and hopefully lasting for life. So thank you for your time. You can contact me if you have any questions, if you'd like me to speak, if you want more information. I am happy to do anything I can to help get the information about um, exercise and Parkinson's disease out there and also about the power paradigm and how useful it can be in treating these patients. These are some references from my presentation. So if you want to look a little bit further, these are great places to look at more of the research and information that's coming out. And this is my contact information. So again, any questions, if you'd like to chat, if you would like to know what classes we are running, anything like that, please feel free to send me an email. Um, and I hope to hear from you. Thank you very much again for your time.